Florida State House just voted to strip Disney of its special self-governing powers. The House also repealed an exemption for Disney from the state's big tech law, which opened companies to lawsuits if they engage in suspending or deplatforming users, especially politicians. And the bill now heads to Governor Ron DeSantis' desk to sign. Well, our next guest, former McDonald's CEO Ed Renzi, just happens to say that companies have no business being in politics and has launched a conservative initiative to fight woke corporate policies. Yeah, let's talk to him. Joining us now, now former McDonald's CEO, and as I understand it, the inventor of the McNugget, <laughs> which uh, it, right in and of itself says that you, you've done a lot right there. Uh, it, also, the uh, board chairman of uh, Fat Brands, uh, Ed Renzi. Ed, thank you so much. Uh, we are just seeing that the legislature and the, and the uh, governor is right behind it there in Florida, uh, trying to take away a special status of Disney that essentially makes it self-governing, that goes back to the late 60s. It kind of is, you better be careful what you do when you are a politically active company. Is that what's happened here? Uh, I think so in some measure. Uh, the Democrats got themselves in a bit of a box because they've been railing against Disney for the last 25, 30 years about them having special privilege. Um, and when Disney decided that they were going to comment on the uh, parents' rights bill relative to teaching their children about sex before a certain age, uh, they really, I think, uh, overstepped their bounds. Uh, the boards of directors and CEOs and executives of companies have a duty to the shareholders to increase sales and profits uh, for the benefit of those investors. Um, those proceeds, those profits should go to the uh, individual investor. and They can decide what political uh, activism they want to engage in. It, it is the right of the citizen to do that. And all we're asking is that corporations and institutions that are public do a very careful civil rights audit to make sure that their practices and policies don't deny anybody their rights under our Constitution or their ability uh, to be gainfully employed and prosper and grow. And uh, I had lunch with Milton Friedman a long time ago, about 1996, I think it was, and he told me very point blank, he said, young man, understand, your duty is to build profits for the investor, and they can decide what to do with their money. That is not a choice you should make. And that resonated with me. And I think uh, the framers of our Constitution were worried about this. They didn't want the tyranny of a minority. Uh, if you read the Federalist Papers, as I've done a couple of times now, it's very clear in there that minorities with a big voice don't champion over top of the majority of the people in the United States. And I, I feel badly for Disney because I think they're really trying to do the right thing and elevate everybody in their organization as well as customers. You know, we need to elevate minorities. We need to, to help, help them help themselves become more a part of our society, more a part of our economic structure. And you know as well as I do that African-Americans, Hispanics, Asians over the a long history of our country have been denied opportunities. And Martin Luther King showed us a new way, but corporations has got no business involved in political activism in my my thinking. Yeah, and you, everything that you were just talking about in terms of how it's impacting these companies and their value, you can see it. Uh, we can take a look at the performance of Disney's stock specifically, uh, the worst performing stock in the Dow Jones Industrial Average for the past year, plummeting 31 percent in the last 12 months. We've seen the same thing ha happen with Netflix mm. as announced this past week. But I also wanted to ask you, what exactly do you mean by a civil rights audit? And how would a company that's listening to you right now do that? Well, when you think about some of these policies, practices, training programs, when you suggest to your employees uh, who are white and not in minority groups that they have to somehow subvert themselves or subordinate themselves and share or give up their power because of their whiteness uh, to others, I think you begin to trample on their civil rights as citizens of the United States to be who they are in the way they are. And I think it, there needs to be balance. So anytime you make a decision like this, you're going to alienate customers and employees and your supply chain in some fashion. You know, our society is not homogeneous. We have 350 million people, give or take a few, 
Uh, and the reality of it is we're all individuals. We all have different value systems. And when I go to work for a company, I represent them when I'm at work, but I don't necessarily represent them all the time, every day of my life. And I don't want them telling me how to live my life. I don't want them to tell me how to vote. I don't want them to tell me what products to buy. That is not the role of a corporation. The role of a corporation is to run that company well, to garner profits, earn profits in a good way so that the shareholders benefit. And by that, all the stakeholders will ultimately benefit. Yeah, I wanted to, you know, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on what Elon Musk tweeted the other day about Netflix. He said, the woke mind virus is making Netflix unwatchable. Following that tweet, Netflix stock, it, it went down 30% at the open. Uh, that was a couple days ago, I think it was. They, they've been hammered because of what's going on. They actually reported mm -hmm. a loss of subscribers, so there are a lot of uh, uh, real uh, earnings problems that they have, or real challenges. But one of the reasons that's occurring, according to Elon Musk, is that it's become more woke and not delivering the right content to what the viewers actually would like to see. Do you think that's playing a role at all? Well, I don't want to try to put myself in Elon Musk's value system. He is who he is. He's a very, very bright young man. He's done impossible things, and he's proven himself time and time again to be uh, very good at what he does. And, and the one thing he has said that I absolutely champion 100% is that we need to have freedom of speech in this country where every voice can be heard. Um, and when, by de facto, Twitter became the, the town square, the, the town crier, is sort of talking about uh, free speech, uh, then all of a sudden they have a higher responsibility. It isn't just a gossip space. It is about people being a, able to have a voice. And when they throttle that by cutting people out of the process, I think that's wrong. And I think Juan is perfectly correct in calling that out. And he's got the money to challenge them. He is. Um, as far as all the other part of this, Netflix, I don't know a thing about Netflix. Um, I don't even want to opine on it. They get to be who they are. If they do a great job, they're going to make money. If they do a bad job, they're going to lose money. And yeah. they pay the consequences of behavior in the marketplace. I love the free market because it will sort you out if you fail or don't do a good job. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're running Fatburger now, uh, uh, th th that chain? No, I do not run that company. I'm on the board of directors. I'm currently the chairman. Uh, my job is to, my duty is to the shareholders to ensure that the CEO of the company operates properly, that the company grows. Uh, I do not want to run the company. I don't want to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations. I want to provide guidance, systems, processes, procedures, and oversight for the benefit of the shareholder. I used to live I, in California, <laughs> and I've had fat burgers. Have you ever had them? Yeah, they're, no. fan <laughs> they're fantastic. So are the fries. But where are you located without, uh, throughout the country? Well, we are global, actually. Okay. We're coast to coast, border to border, Canada and international. Um, it's a it's a wonderfully run company. In fact, most of the big companies in the United States are doing a really good job. I yeah. look at McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's. They're competitive as all get out, but they do it the right way, and they, they, right. mostly because they're all franchised. Those right. franchisees keep the franchisees keep the executives honest. Believe me, if if. <laughs> If the McDonald's franchisee thought I was doing something wrong, they told me about it in a hurry. Yeah. And, okay. and I used to say all the time, when McDonald's executives get out of line, the franchisees will give us a performance review. All right. And I love the franchising model because all of a sudden you got 3,000 bosses. They're going to keep you sharp. Okay. Ed Rensing, <laughs> he knows what, of what he speaks. Yes. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> Thanks. You bet. Thank you for having me.